DNA profiling or DNA fingerprinting. It's actually not the same thing as taking fingerprints or thumbprints. DNA profiling is a biotechnical process that used blood, saliva, hair, or semen. During this time, an individual's DNA is fingerprinted using fragments of DNA and X-ray technology. These appear as a pattern of dark bands. DNA profiling is unique for all individuals, except for identical twins. And then, the suspect's profile is matched with evidence. Here is an example. Similar to one that you may get in an exam. Let us read through this case study. Inspector Ndlovu and Sergeant Boda were investigating the scene of a violent crime. The victim of the crime was a 70 years old woman. She had been stabbed and left to die. They found a few pieces of hair in one of her hands, which might have come from the murderer. There was also skin under her nails, which she could have got from the murderer if she had been able to fight back. There were three possible suspects in this investigation. All three suspects were required to give blood, and a sample was also taken from the victim. DNA fingerprints of the four samples were compared with the DNA fingerprints of the two samples taken from the crime scene. Here, we have DNA from the hair, DNA from the skin. Here, the victim and the three suspects. The question asked, was the DNA from the hair and the skin under the nails of the victim from the same person? In order to understand this question, and to arrive at an answer, you need to look at the bars that are on these DNA profiles, and then try to match them. In answering the first question, was the DNA from the hair and the skin under the nails of the victim from the same person? The answer would be no, so number one, no. In order to elaborate, one would then say that, the bars don't match. Question 2. Could any of the three suspects have been present at the crime scene? Give a reason for your answer, once again. You need to compare the DNA profiles. Have you come up with an answer? You are correct. Suspect 2 seems to be at the crime scene because the DNA profile of suspect 2 seems to match the DNA profile of the hair. Question 3 says, compare the DNA from the skin found under the fingernails of the victim with the DNA of the victim. What do you notice? Skin with the DNA of the victim. I'm sure you would agree that the bars don't correspond or match, so in answering this question, we would say, compare the DNA of the skin found under the fingernails of the victim with the DNA of the victim. What do you notice? The answer would then read, there is no match. Meaning, the bands do not correspond. To question 4, do you think DNA evidence on its own is enough to convict a criminal? So, they are asking, if we had these profiles, and the profile matched number 2. As this case, would we be correct in stating that the suspect too, was the murderer? Well, unfortunately, we cannot say for certain that, suspect too was the murderer. What would be my reasoning? Well put in another way, someone could have planted this DNA, sample in the scene, and thus frame suspect too. The answer to this question, do you think DNA, evidence on its own is enough? No. And the reason for this is that, the DNA, could be planted at the scene, and this would then frame a certain person. The last question. 
Do you think it would be a good idea to collect the DNA from every person in the country to create a DNA fingerprint database? Provide arguments for and against. You may provide more answers, but we will just take one for and one against. Why would it be a good idea to have the DNA fingerprints of everybody in a country? Say yes. It will be easier to identify criminals absolutely. If we have a crime scene, and we have some DNA, we just go through our database, and then we can match the DNAs. If we had to look at an argument against it, why won't it be a good idea to have the DNA, of everybody, on our database? First answer is that, it's too expensive a process, and also a very good answer would be that, our DNA, information is basically our personal information, and we have a right to revealing our personal details. Uses of DNA, Profiling Firstly, like we have done in the previous slide, it's used to identify criminals. Secondly, if siblings are lost at birth, or separated, you are able to identify the siblings. In order to diagnose genetic disorders, paternity testing, may be in families to identify the father. And also, to use human, remains at an accident scene, or at a site, to provide positive identification. To identify human remains. However, this method may not be totally acceptable in a court of law. Why would this be so? Simply because, there is no uniform standard procedure for taking fingerprints, or DNA, fingerprints more correctly. If everybody in all the countries, and all the different towns were using the same technique, it may become more reliable, but we are unsure about the standard or the procedure that they are using. And secondly, it is possible to plant DNA, and to frame people at a crime scene.